our uh, closing remarks today are by uh, Dr. Picanti, who's the director of the Army Research Lab. I recognize that I'm standing in the way of alcohol, probably, so I'm going to be brief, uh, as brief as I can be, which sometimes is not so brief. Um, but I want, to, I want to thank Tom and I want to thank Lee for once again asking me to close out these sessions. We're making a habit out of this. I'm not sure this is a good thing. However, I do want to say the Army Research Laboratory, we're the, we're the Army's corporate research laboratory. We're responsible for fundamental research across a broad array of technologies for the Army. And as we move to the future, particularly uh, with Futures Command, the Army Futures Command standing up, it's an imperative, and I think it's an, it's an identified imperative across all of the leadership that we bring together the operational environment, the concept development people, and the S&T community together at the very beginning to have these conversations about what the future of our Army and our nation ultimately will be. So this is a strong partnership uh, that I absolutely endorse, and uh, that's why whenever I can and whenever they're available, you know, I take the time to come and, and spend a day or two uh, with the Mad Scientist uh, organization. So thank you for putting these things on because I, I learn a lot. So from a closing remarks point of view, um, this is what I, Phil Perconti, learned in 2018 about learning in 2050 today. Uh, so I thought I'd give you some of my insight of what I heard today. What I learned just from Tristan is that I know absolutely nothing about biochemistry and pharmacology, so, uh, you know, I got a lot to learn in that space, but I think the future of, the, of that uh, particular technology is going to be something we should pay attention to. No question about it. So, so let me just share a few observations with you and within a few minutes, and, and then I will absolutely let you go. So. Lieutenant General Martin, what did he say? He said, the greatest asset is the human mind. And we absolutely believe that from our perspective with our soldiers. There is nothing more important to the United States Army and to this country than the soldiers who fight uh, our wars and protect us as a nation. So what is the issue, right? The issue, I think, and he said it, is the complexity of the technology and the complexity of the problem space today is outreaching our current training methods. And so we need to get to the point where we can increase our efficiency, not only for training, but for learning. So right on with this topic for 2050. So I also heard from Steve Hatfield that there's an exponential development of technology, and it's both disruptive and it's an opportunity. And we heard from Andrew Smith Lewis that people are obsessed with personal <coughs> devices. And that's so true. And so I think what I see today is this trend to exploit, not in a pejorative way, but to exploit personal devices and the data that comes with it in a way to allow greater opportunity for accelerated training and learning. And so I heard from, from Greg that opportunity favors the prepared. So while we're taking advantage of and exploiting the technology that we know about today, <coughs> The future will hold other technology advances that we also need to be prepared to exploit. So this has to, we have to stay open-minded about how technology will emerge. So very important, I think, accelerated learning through personalized learning and digital training. Clearly, we are on a trajectory, I think, to what I describe as a virtual cognitive coach. So I want to give you one, one story. <laughs> in the time I have. Uh, so, so in his book, Ralph DeBelli describes a story about Max Planck, who is the Nobel laureate in theoretical physics from the early 20th century. So when he received his Nobel Prize, he went around Germany giving, giving lectures to many of the different universities around Germany. And of course, back then, he had a chauffeur. And the chauffeur was dressed in a uniform, and he had his, his chauffeur cap on. And as they went around the country, uh, Professor Planck was giving his, his lecture, uh, and his chauffeur was sitting in the front row. And after six months, seven, eight months of these lectures, the chauffeur was finally getting you know, a bit frustrated with having to actually sit and listen to the same lecture over and over and over again. So he said to Professor Planck, you know, I've heard this lecture so many times, I could probably give it. 
And so Professor Planck said, well, I'll tell you what, we're going to Munich University, Munchen University, next time we go, I'll put on your uniform, you can be me, and you can go give the lecture. So this is what happens. So they announce Professor Planck, up comes the chauffeur, Professor Planck sits in the audience, he gives a flawless lecture, absolutely flawless. So one of the uh, academicians after the lecture is completed said to, any questions? So somebody raises her hand and asks a very exquisite question about some analysis, whether well, you put it on the blackboard right back then, some analysis that was written on the blackboard. And of course, the chauffeur looked at him with a, a level of indignation and said, I cannot believe in such a prestigious university here in Munich that you would ask me such a naive question. That question is so naive, my chauffeur can answer it. <laughs> It says a wonderful thing about data, information, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And so we can never forget that, that as we start to build up this new environment of learning, that we are not only imparting data, and we are not only imparting knowledge, but we're imparting wisdom and understanding. And this is particularly important for warfighters. And I want to emphasize this a little bit because I think the future of warfighting is we talk about our ability to take advantage of all of this technology, cognitive decision aids, artificial intelligence and machine learning. All of this is putting our warfighters, in particular our leadership, in a position where they have to be comfortable with inference, right? With non-deterministic systems that provide uh, probabilities and confidence intervals to uh, augment reality, to, I'm sorry, to augment decision making, right? I think what I heard from Andrew Smith was, we wanna use AI to help humans learn better or help humans be better. I don't have the exact quote in front of me. But that notion, right, means that we have to be comfortable with inference and we have to teach our leaders today how to be comfortable with inference. What does it mean if I'm a decision maker and a system, uh, a system tells me that there is a 90% probability that there's a target of interest in a building and it only has 50% confidence that that target of interest is there and in the same time it tells me that there's a 90% chance that there are non-combatants in that building and it's 100% confident that that's true. How am I comfortable as a, as a leader about discerning the risk associated with those inferences? Because what these systems will impart is information, that's today. As AI begins to uh, improve and as it becomes more sophisticated and it gets out of its narrow confines into more flexible domains, AI will begin to impart understanding, but will it ever impart wisdom? Will it ever impart intuition? That's the thing that we, as human beings, have to stay focused on and, and remain, remain close to us because that's what's, that's what's precious to us. That's what makes us human. But in a world of 2050, what I've seen and what I think is we will become comfortable with inference, but we have to teach it. And we have to teach it to our uniform staff, and we have to teach it in our schools. Because, you know, as I heard today, uh, isn't it true, everything on the internet? Well, you can believe that if there's no cost associated with that. But everything we do in our space, there's a cost associated to those decisions, and we have to be comfortable with that. So that's kind of what I learned today. And uh, I had a great day, so thank you very much. Uh, I won't be here tomorrow, but uh, you know, keep it going, because I really, really enjoy it. And I think it's great for the whole community. So, all right, have a great night. This is, this is
this is why we ask him to close because if everybody learned as much as you did today, <laughs> we're, we're a lot smarter. So just briefly, you have most of our swag. We've given to you in the past, but you followed Dr. Bren's presentation. I remember you specifically enjoyed it in Silicon Valley. Yeah. So what we're giving you today is we had him sign some books. This is his most recent book, Otherness, oh, signed cool. by David Bren for you to take home and put it in your library, That's sir. Well done. Thank Thanks. you, sir. Cheers. Thank you.